What is going on, Dolphins fans? Ben Morgan, Fins Up Network, and I'll tell you what, it is good to be back doing a recap video when we get to talk about a win. As you know, the Miami Dolphins knock off the New York Giants 31-16. to Could have been an even bigger win than that, but I tell you what, we will take this bounce back win however possible. Nice to get a double-digit win, but like I said, beautiful to get a bounce back win after the way the Buffalo Bills treated us last week in that 28-point loss. But just like the Dolphins touchdown song says, we got it done on the ground. We got it done through the air. We were in control, and we could have been even in more control of that game. And we'll talk about that at the end of today's video. But we're going to get to all my top takeaways, player notes, my game ball, but I want to hear from you as well. Your top takeaways from the game, your game ball, who do you got? Go ahead, throw it in the comments for your first place in the AFC East. Miami Dolphins, because yes, thank you to the Jacksonville Jaguars for taking care of business this morning against those Bills. But let's start with the defense, because man, we there was a certain unit that we really wanted to see a, a rise in production and performance from on that defense. The defense in, as a whole, we needed a rise from, and we got, but man, that interior, a day to remember for the interior. As a whole, the Dolphins got seven sacks. We talked about getting sacks against the New York Giants, how the, the Seahawks got 11 earlier in the year. I think it was like the Cowboys got seven. It was our turn, and we got seven sacks today, 14 QB hits. The combination of Daniel Jones and Tyrod Taylor were just running for their lives nonstop in this game. Zach Sealer, you're going to hear his name a couple of times in today's video. He had two sacks. We're talking interior now. Christian Wilkins had a half sack. But those guys, continually, if you were watching the interior of the line, which we talked and said to do, constantly beating their guy off the ball, constantly getting into the into the face of Daniel Jones, flushing him in, in from the pocket, setting up other guys for those tackles as well, getting run stops in, um, in the obviously in the run game, getting that penetration up the middle. I just said a lot there basically to say we are getting penetration up the middle, finally exactly what this defense needs, exactly what we were looking for. But Zach Sealer. Talked about his run stops as well. Three tackles for a loss. The team had seven. And one of Zach Sealer's sacks, actually, I, I jotted this one down just because I loved how it went down. Came on a third down when we only rushed four guys. Exactly what Fangio wants, exactly what we want to do. It makes the New York Giants settle for their first field goal of the game. You got to imagine that is exactly what Vic Fangio wanted. You could tell he was probably up in the box just grinning ear to ear on that one. That's what he wants this defense to look like. But we talked about it before. When you get that penetration up the middle with only four, sometimes five, but a lot of times today with just four, you obviously get more guys in the secondary and you get to obviously keep things in front of you as well. And an absolute perfect example of this today it wasn't a turnover producing play. It was just a play that stood out to me was we only rushed four. We knew they were going to pass. We got to hang guys back a little bit. There was a pass that was thrown pretty well to Darren Waller, the middle of the field. Well, we had enough guys in the secondary where Holland was able to actually play back and see that because he got to hang out into his zone, comes over and pops the ball away. It's the little things like that that allows us to have those kind of plays when we're only rushing the four, uh, the four guys. But the defense, just sound today. They technically actually only allowed nine points. They obviously had the touchdown on Tua's first interception, and then their second field goal was also set up from Tua's second interception, which the ball was basically put in field goal range. So to only allow uh, nine points and basically give them a couple of field goals, hell of a day by the defense. Let's talk a little bit about this offense as well, because we saw something a little bit different today from the Dolphins offense, Mike McDaniel, and his play calling. And that was setting the tone with a horizontal offense because our calling card the last two years has been that the middle of the field, that mid-range deep ball connections to Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Do we see guys running wide open through the middle of the field today? That wasn't what we did today. This was a beautiful showcase of how this offense can evolve and beat you in different ways. We incorporated so many horizontal action moving plays today, which actually executed the offense and was able to really take advantage of that speed and that ability to produce after the catch. Numerous runs went out wide, a variety of those pop passes, whether it was to uh, running backs or wide receivers where you're basically sprinting them outside. Numerous of those today. Screen passes, have we ever seen a game where we've, we've run some screen passes here and there, but just as consistently to Waddle and Hill today, 
And like I said, then you just, you get the ball in the playmaker's hands, you get all that action going horizontally, and then it's the speed and the playmaking ability, which we have an abundance of. Well, guess what? The defense kind of got used to that, kind of made a couple of different adjustments. Tua, Tyreek, Tyreek beats his man coverage on a fly route. Obviously, Tyreek's going to get his guy. If he's in single coverage, Tua's going to give him a chance 10 times out of 10 times. Obviously, Tyreek outruns the defender. Tua places it perfectly, 69-yard touchdown. This is the kind of evolution we wanted to see from this offense, and it was put on display today. Were there a couple of play calling mishaps, like a couple of third and ones that maybe we could have back yet once again? Sure. We weren't flawless by any means, but I loved the fact that we didn't just use the middle of the field deep balls. We get we got a couple of those sporadically in there. We get the deep ball to Tyreek, but what we were able to do to stretch that field horizontally today, get the ball in space to playmakers and let them create once the ball was in their hands was beautiful. And one of those playmakers, Devon Agehan. This guy, he should just get machine written on the back of his jersey. 11 carries, 151 yards, and a touchdown, including the 76-yard touchdown where the speed was once again on display. Added a catch for 14 yards as well. It's funny, when he gets squared up onto a defender, you can almost kind of see like the defender panic because they don't know, is he is he going to juke me? Is he going to run right by me? Sometimes they just simply don't know what he's going to do, and it's showing on the field. I tell you what. I was texting a buddy during the game. He's an angle eraser. He is like Tyreek. He is like Waddle. There's no such thing as an angle on this guy. He completely erases them. The negative? There, yep, there was one negative today. He did have the fumble when the team was driving. But guess what? Talk about the ultimate redemption. His next touch was a 76-yard touchdown. Man, he is He's nothing more. He's just a fun player. Like I said, put machine on his jersey. He went into this game averaging like over 11 yards per carry, I think it was. On his 11 carries today, he averaged 13 yards per carry. What he is doing right now, enjoy it because it's not always going to be this smooth for him. But holy cow, right now he's like, yep, go ahead and just put my, engrave my name on that play, um, offensive rookie of the year trophy. Just do it now. Unbelievable performance once again from Devon H. Han. Let's talk, we, like I said, we had a couple of negatives we wanted to get to, so I'm labeling this one Tua's ups and downs because that first offensive drive for the Dolphins today, that was Mike McDaniel play calling poetry. What beautiful way he did this. He was getting the ball. Tua was getting the ball out quick. They were including numerous players. They were just spreading it around to everybody, getting to the playmakers, obviously, in space, and then the drive results in the Waddell touchdown. Not his first read, not his second read. It was probably his third or fourth read. Being able to get out there and being able to find Waddle, that possession was awesome. That's all good stuff. There was plenty of more good stuff as well. Tyreek, eight catches, 181 yards. The dude is electric as hell. You don't even need to hear any more about that. But the two interceptions thrown made this game be an actual game probably a little bit longer than it needed to be. The first one, that ball was completely forced. Um, that also blows your chance. You would have scored a touchdown there, you're up 21 to three. You're up 21 to three. There's not much time left in the first half and you're getting the ball back to start the second half. Instead, you go up halftime 17 to 10. That kind of stinks. Second interception, obviously shouldn't have thrown that ball. Jalen Waddle on his route didn't, kind of the way the play developed, he's like, I'm not going to get this ball. So it really didn't look like he was coming this way. But Tua threw that ball without, if you, if you saw the view from the back, kind of like what Tua was seeing, Tua couldn't even see what he was throwing it to. It was a very regrettable throw. It was actually one of the first times I can really remember his, his size. Being a little bit shorter probably didn't work. Any, any favors for him on that one? He sort of blindly threw that one up. I haven't seen anything from him post game yet, but I guarantee you he wants those balls back. But at the end of the day, there's obviously things to clean up. There's obviously things to be more efficient on. But we're getting a double-digit win when we didn't even play close to as flawlessly as we have this year and as we can, I will take it. <laughs> Let's talk about that game ball. We'll wrap things up. And I said you're going to hear his name again, and it's Zach Sealer. Seven tackles, two sacks, three tackles for a loss, three quarterback hits. This is the game that we have been waiting for from the interior of our defensive line. And Christian Wilkins was damn good in this one, too. He was beating his guy off the snap. I don't want to say every single time because that would be a little bit hyperbole, but more often than not, that's the interior of this line is exactly what we wanted to see. What a great 
breakout game, both of them being a force this, uh, on this game. Obviously, we got to build on this. We get another game against the Panthers here before things get turned up a little bit against the Eagles. Obviously, we're not looking past the Panthers, but you got to get this defense right. Today was a first great stepping stone in that. And I tell you what, sooner than later, we're going to have Jalen Phillips back as well. Well, you can add him to the mix with the way Van Ginkle's playing. Chubb had some nice plays today. Obviously, the two guys in the interior. We get all of that going. We get all of that clicking. This defense has got some great potential. Oh, yeah, and Jalen Ramsey will come back eventually as well. But that is what I've got. Like I said, there's probably a lot more out there as well, but that's where you come in as well. I want to hear your takeaways, your thoughts from the game, and your game ball. That's what I've got. We will be back early in the week, throughout the week, pre, uh, previewing that game against the Panthers. I got to say it once again, for your first place in the AFC East, Miami Dolphins. Good win today, Dolphins fans. Let's celebrate this one. And until next time, Fins 